IFM Podcast. Following 180 with Bob is encouraged on Twitter. Uh, in today's papers, you see a report on how Israel told 100,000 Gazans to flee their homes uh, thus yesterday. But the warning was largely, largely ignored as regional leaders made fresh attempts to end the bloody nine-day confrontation. Hours later, it's reported Israel resumed its air campaign after Egyptian uh, broker truce efforts collapsed. Four children were killed and several injured at a beach in Gaza City. If you, unlike me, uneducated in these matters, you definitely want to join in this conversation. Prof Happer, I'm at a loss as to exactly what is going on in that region, who's fighting whom for what. Can you paint a picture for us, please, Professor Happer? It's hard in a couple in a couple of words, but basically, there's one country here that the Jews call Israel, the Palestinians call Palestine, and they're fighting over how to how to divide it. But the fact is that Israel is an occupying power. Israel is infinitely stronger than the Palestinians militarily and economically. And in 1967, of course, it conquered the West Bank, East Jerusalem, and Gaza. Uh, And that's that's an area that's less than a quarter of historic Palestine that the Palestinians want for a state of their own. They're willing to live with Israel. They're willing to recognize Israel. They're willing to leave Israel in 78% of their country. If they can get the 22% that's left for a state of their own. And Israel says no. And builds settlements and opens wars on the Palestinians. Um, um, so that this war in Gaza now is really Israel's attempt to break Hamas, to break the Palestinian resistance, and to create a situation, I think, worse than apartheid what we call warehousing, where Palestinians are actually imprisoned forever. They'll never have a state. They'll be locked into little areas of Gaza in the West Bank and be impoverished forever. And that's really what the war is about. Hamas is resisting, and uh, and Israel is in the process of mopping up, of trying to finish any Palestinian resistance, both on the West Bank and on Gaza. Prof Helper on the line with us. On the other line, Prof, we have Ado Daniel from Iska for Israel. Is this how you read the situation when we trace back history, Ado? Good morning. Yeah. Yeah. Hi. Good morning. Well, uh, at first I have to say that uh, um, maybe our uh, conversation will be interrupted by uh, an air raid siren. Uh, it's morning when I, uh, right now. It's uh, uh, eight uh, fifteen, uh, and it's the exact time when. They shoot uh, missiles from Gaza to Israeli cities uh, in order to interrupt the morning routine of Israelis when they uh, drop off their kids in school. So it is summer break, but it is uh, summer school and um, uh, going to work. Well, um, I don't want to, uh, you know, uh, uh, um, uh, answer the entire manifesto of uh, Professor Helper is uh, trying, well, what, what he's trying to say and do. Well, um, the Jews don't call it Israel. Not only the Jews, it's the world that call uh, Israel by its name, the state of Israel. And uh, the, the situation here, uh, um, it's not a resistance. Uh, we've been hit by missiles for 14 years now. 14 years. Um of uh, constant rocket attacks from Gaza by Hamas, which is a terrorist organization who is using his own uh, civilians as human shields. And it's, it's well known uh, in the media. It's been uh, reported all over again. And still, uh, uh, no one is condemning Hamas uh, for what, they doing, what they're doing. We're facing, for 14 years, more than 10 thousand rockets on Israeli cities, on Israeli civilians, then they're all aimed directly at civilians, not on military targets, on civilians, on purpose. This is practices of a terrorist organization. And what Israel is trying to do now is uh, to uproot Hamas and its terror practices from Gaza Strip uh, and uh, bring relief to Israeli citizens. I don't, let me let me ask you this question. You, you, you know, you painted a picture of expecting any shelling at any stage into Israel. 
normal people, let's separate the politicians and the policies and the hardcore beliefs and talk about normal right. Israelis. What do normal Israelis want? But you, you know, Everybody wants peace. But what is it that, that they want fundamentally? What Israelis want fundamentally and what Palestinians want fundamentally is the same thing, according to recent polls is uh, a peace solution based on the two-state solution. Um, we think, uh, most Israelis are uh, do think, and recent poll even uh, uh, during this uh, uh, operation says the same, that Israelis do want peace and reconciliation with, with Palestinians, but they want the terror attacks to stop. Um, uh, what uh, Jeff is trying to do here is uh, distort the reality, distort the conflict. Um, it's very bad, you know, it's uh, very unfortunate to hear that. Um, maybe we should ask him uh, what his solution, uh, uh, you know, uh, for the Middle East and for the Middle East conflict. It won't be the two-state solution, I guarantee it to you. Okay, Kai FM 95.9, good music, good friends. Prof, help, I'll give you a chance now just to introduce uh, ICARD. It is a human rights and peace organization dedicated to ending the prolonged Israeli occupation over Palestinians. Uh, it's a student project dedicated to further uh, elimination of anti-Semitic content and accountability of those who spread it online and on social media platform. If the survey by, uh, that Ido is alluding to, Prof, is correct, and naturally from a human being's perspective, irrespective of where you come from, what your origin is, that seems sensible. Why is it not happening then, Prof? Well, first of all, what he isn't saying is the most important part, and that is it's true there's rocket fire for 14 years, but there's an occupation for 47 years. In other words, he didn't mention the word occupation at all, and that's the big problem. Israelis don't see occupation They don't see their settlements. They don't see their responsibility in oppressing the Palestinians. So when Palestinians resist, whether it's through rockets or or in any other way, and I don't agree always with their resistance. I don't think they should fire rockets on civilians, for sure. But at the same time, they can't be left living in occupation forever. And so when they resist, Israelis look at it as a terrorist attack because it's completely apoliticized. There's no context to it. And in fact, and in fact, it's resistance. The problem is the Palestinians agreed 26 years ago to the two-state solution. You had the Oslo peace process. You had all kinds of negotiations now with Kerry. And it's Israel that says, no, that's what you're telling you. Three days ago, Netanyahu, our prime minister, said publicly there will never, ever be a two-state solution. Israel will never give up control of the occupied territories. It's official in Israel. And even uh, Kerry said that the Israeli settlement policy of building settlements in the West Bank to a point where there can't be a Palestinian state was why the negotiations failed. So the problem is that on the one hand, Israelis don't see the political context. They don't see the occupation. They only see the resistance to terrorism, and on the other hand, their government will not make peace, which is a two-state solution, and therefore, the only solution that's left, that Israel has left us with, is eventually one democratic state in this land where Israelis and Palestinians live together. And that's going to have to be something that the international community forces on Israel, just like it forced the end of apartheid, it's going to have to force the end of the occupation to create equality between Israelis and Palestinians. Do you think that's possible, though? I mean, this has been going on, um, the conflict has been going on, as you said, for, for a very long time. Do you think that it is possible that um, um, a, a superpower could come through and stop it and, 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 and stop all the violence? It's not necessarily a superpower. I mean, who believed in the world that apartheid was going to end? Nobody believes that. But these things are unsustainable. The Israel-Palestinian conflict isn't only a local conflict between Israelis and Palestinians. It disrupts the entire international system. It has to do with the alienation of the Muslim world from the West. It has to do with oil. It has to do with world security. The Americans and Europeans are fighting five or six wars in the Middle East. This is something that simply cannot go on. It's, it's really destroying 
the whole international system. And so I think when, and, and same with the Gaza thing now, it's just violence on the part of Israel, really, for the sake of violence. I know, uh, I'm going to have to interrupt the prof for a second there. But, but the, what the prof is saying, on the other hand, I know, is that there, there is occupation one, two, for a couple of days now, there's been shelling, and you're saying it's self defense. Am I correct? It's self defense when Israel is, you know, it's retaliating, basically, and trying to root up the terror infrastructure in the Gaza Strip. Um, what uh, Jesse is referring, you know, I'm trying to understand really um, the terrorists. Why is this story? It's always terrorists. Of uh, no, don't interrupt me, please. Do not interrupt me. Um, uh, you know, distorting the reality of this uh, conflict. Uh, we're talking about uh, long, long conflict between Israelis and Palestinians. Uh, I don't know what he's referring to, uh, Benjamin Netanyahu uh, saying so about the two-state solution. I do not read an such comment. I do not know such comment by Benjamin Netanyahu, who is uh, uh, completely uh, uh, all about uh, the two-state solution, and it is a well-known fact. Even he's trying to fight other voices in his coalition about that. Um, uh, we're talking about uh, uh, agreements and trying to make an agreement in the Israeli-Palestinian conflict for, you know, for years and years now, if it was Camp David, uh, uh, if it was the Oslo Accords, of course, and all those places, White Plantation, all those, and, and, Sh- and Sharem, and, and you know, I'm just trying and get things from the top of my head, uh, um, and uh, all, of the, all those agreements, and every single time, Palestinians said no. But we are still trying to make peace with them. And what's happening today in Gaza, for example, is you have a terrorist organization uh, that threw, uh, uh, basically, the, they, brought, uh, they, they brought themselves to power uh, uh, after be doing a coup d'etat in the Gaza Strip, taking the Gaza civilians as hostages. Are, are, you, saying, Ido, that, uh, are you saying, Ido, that Hamas is occupying power there or, or is ruling or is a voice illegally? Let's frame the entire conflict. Who's the superpower here? Israel is not a superpower in the Middle East with 22 countries, Arab countries, around it. Look at the Middle East what? as a whole. Israel is the fourth power largest here. nuclear power in the world. Who's the what superpower are you talking here? about? What are you talking well, you know, about? Israel defeated you know, the entire Arab world in six days in 1967. Israel is an ally of the United States. What are you talking about that Israel is not the superpower? People, Israeli people simply will tend not to take responsibility for what they do. Bob, people tend to forget what the size of Israel. Israel is, the, is about the size. Palestine is smaller than Israel. It's about the size of Palestinians want to stay on 22% of the country. It's much smaller than yeah. Israel. The West Bank and Gaza are much smaller than Israel. That does size really matter either when one has nuclear arms and has the U.S. as their friend or ally? That's right. You can, I, I, you know, I'm not, I'm not a government official. Sure. I don't know about any nu- nuclear or something. I, I can't, you know, sure. uh, nuclear power. Uh, nuclear power. Okay, come on. Uh, uh, it's not just, you know, we have uh, our missile pad ready to launch nuclear missiles at Palestinians. This is a complete nonsense. To say and um, why is that nonsense? Uh, why is that nonsense? That's true. What we're trying and to the Iranians and the Palestinians the is this and in Egypt. Is this true, really, Jeff? Is, yes, is it is true. I, I know you have two to three hundred to do nuclear warheads. It's true. And I kept my mouth and I kept so my mouth shut during what you said about apartheid in Israel, which is truly very demeaning uh, for the true victims of apartheid in South Africa. This is such yes, an opportunity. It is not demeaning. It is not demeaning. It gives all of us hope that it is demeaning. South Africa will end apartheid. Israel will be able to end apartheid as well. All right, gentlemen, we have to wrap it up in a second or two. Gentlemen, what about 20 years from now? What is going to be happening? What do you see happening in 20 years from now? Right. Prof. Harper? In 20 years, um, I see, I tell you the truth, I think we're in a collapse right now. I don't think Israel can sustain the occupation. It's too disruptive, like I said, of the interna- to the international community. And it's, it's simply too violent. And, and it has no point to it. I think what's going to happen is it's going to collapse. 
I think the Palestinian Authority is going to leave the scene. I think Abu Mazen is going to go because it has no legitimacy. And, uh, and Israel is going to reoccupy the entire country. And it's going to so overplay its hand in terms of power, it'll be so violent towards the Palestinians that in the end, I think the international community is going to intervene. You already have a BDS campaign in the world, boycotts, divestment, sanctions. You already have civil society rising up. You have churches speaking out, trade unions, and governments will start to follow. And I think what the only thing that can happen is eventually is going to be a one-state solution, an equal democratic state of Israelis and Palestinians. This occupation and violent oppression of Palestinians simply cannot continue. All right. Prof. Happer, thank you so much for being with us this morning. Ida, 20 years from now? Can I, can I have a final word, please, Bob? Absolutely. Absolutely, Ida. Absolutely. Well, um, uh, uh, it's, it's funny to say that because Israel withdraws its, its forces and civilians from Gaza. There is no occupation in Gaza for Gazans. But still, there is a terrorist organization over there. Um, and trying to uh, uh, make uh, terror attacks uh, against civilians. I would like to, to say a few words about uh, Jeff Helper, if I may. Um, people, your listeners probably will uh, think he's uh, uh, a mainstream voice in Israel. Well, he's a radical guy, a radical activist. Uh, even the EU thought he's too radical for getting their funds in 2008 and they rejected his application for getting funding from the European Union and this is and this is just an example is also against uh, uh, the um, Arab peace initiative it called it a scheme an Arab peace initiative not an Israeli initiative an Arab initiative and he called it a, a scheme because Israel accepted to deal uh, to uh, try to negotiate with it so people trying to understand well uh, his name is Jeff Harper, but he's not helping at all. Uh, this is what he's doing for a living. He's afraid from peace and reconciliation with the Palestinians based on the two-state solution. Because when peace will come between Israelis and Palestinians, hopefully he will be unemployed. So you, you do believe uh, that peace will come, Ido? You, those, those were the words that you used. You do believe that peace will come? Yes, I do believe. That thank you. Thank you very much. We'll end it there. I do, Daniel, there's a belief. I, th- I think they both believe the same thing. It's only the methodology. How is it going to happen? Who's going to concede more? Who's going to say, okay, I will concede one, two, three, four in lieu of one, two, three, four. But from where I'm standing right now, it's not going to be a nine day war. It's going to continue because old men declare wars and young men actually go into the field and fight them. The children, that's what I'm worried about. Following 180 with Bob is encouraged on Twitter. Stay tuned to Kaya FM.